It is through observing the past and reflecting on our own experiences that we gain the clarity to discern truth. Time vindicates and reveals the difference between the men of God and the Antichrists. In this exploration, we journey into history in search of such men. By understanding these past figures, we equip ourselves with knowledge to recognize true men of God today. In this episode, we will examine the rare sign of Revelation 12, which manifested clearly on September 6th, 1483. But for those not acquainted with our channel, we must first explain the meaning and significance of this magnificent sign. Quoting scripture, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. We should begin with the woman. There seems to be a general consensus that this refers to the sign of Virgo, as it is the only star constellation representing a woman that is visible from both the northern and the southern hemispheres. We should also reflect on the meanings of the Virgin, as she symbolizes purity, cleanliness, order, structure, the church, holiness, and health. Hold on to this concept, as it is exemplified by the other part of the sign. She is crowned with a crown of twelve stars. This is depicted by the constellation Leo with its nine stars overhead, along with the moving planet Venus within the star field of Leo and Mercury and Mars positioned right at the crown of Virgo, giving her a crown of twelve stars in 1483 AD. We should examine the meaning of the number twelve through the lens of the earliest form of Hebrew. The number twelve is a construct of ten and two. In ancient Hebrew, two was depicted as a house and ten as a hand or arm, often symbolizing the right arm of power or even God. Together, twelve can represent God's house. This interpretation is clearly evident when considering the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve apostles called by Jesus, both of which symbolize God's house. Considering this alignment altogether, the implication is that in this generation, God will set his house in order and have a man of God on the earth. This is further supported by the sun overshadowing the virgin in this sign, symbolizing God's presence as the light and the power of the sun are among the most divine signs in the sky. Additionally, the moon being placed under the foot of Virgo represents another key symbol in this alignment. As the moon is a companion bride to the sun and corresponds to the number two, it also represents a house, but in this context, it symbolizes the old order. The virgin, Virgo, is the central theme of this sign, representing the new, holier bride, She is pushing the moon underfoot, which symbolizes the old bride, covenant, church, or order being placed beneath her, as if its covenant status is being revoked in favor of the new, purer order represented by Virgo, the virgin. Now that we understand the sign, let's visit what happened in history. Was there anything significant happening in 1483? Indeed, something truly significant was unfolding in 1483. On November 10th, of that year, under the biblical sign of the eagle, more commonly known as Scorpio, Martin Luther was born. This event resonates with the imagery in Revelation chapter 12 verse 2, where it speaks of the virgin sign in the heavens, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. This all coincides as this man-child was in the womb, with the heavens declaring a profound message in the stars as if to foretell the impact his life would have. Luther would grow to be a man inspired of God, whose courage would challenge the very foundations of the church at the time. One of Luther's defining acts was his bold challenge to the practices of indulgences, leading him to nail his 95 Thesis to the door of the Wittenberg Castle Church in 1517. This act wasn't merely a protest, It was a declaration that faith and salvation were gifts freely given by God through Christ, not commodities to be sold. His thesis ignited a movement that changed Christian history forever. But Luther's impact went beyond theology. His translation of the Bible into German empowered the common people to read the Word of God for themselves, enabling them to connect directly with deity. He opened the scriptures and put the power of the rod of iron, or in other words, the word of God, into their hands, giving them the tools to engage in a more personal, direct relationship with God. 
This again is reflected in the prophecy in Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Interestingly, in this cycle, Luther played the role of bringing this light and knowledge to the people, ushering in a new era of spiritual empowerment. At the same time, Luther's conflict with the Pope, who was more concerned with power and control, draws a stark contrast between the true men of God and those of darkness. The dragon in Revelation, seeking to devour the man-child, can be compared to the Pope's attempt to suppress Luther's work and to keep the word of God from the people. The difference between men of God and the Antichrist lies in their motivations. The former seeks to liberate and enlighten, while the latter seeks to dominate and deceive. Luther's legacy, therefore, was not just a theological one, but a spiritual revolution. He fulfilled the role of a man of God by placing the word of God directly in the hands of the people, freeing them from spiritual bondage and connecting them directly to the divine. As the prophecy foretold and narrated by the true story of what God was showing in this sign, there is a new covenant holder found on earth, Martin Luther. Just as the virgin in the sky pushed the moon symbolizing the old covenant church under her feet in an act of divorcement, the Catholic Church lost the keys of the kingdom. At this pivotal time, the Protestants carried the keys of God's kingdom. This is the simple meaning of that sign at that time. As a wave of awakening Christianity emerged, believers were drawn closer to their Creator, empowered to hold the Word of God in their own hands, rather than being bound by human authority. Notably, Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 describes how the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness where she is nourished. Is it mere coincidence that Martin Luther was born under the sign of the eagle? As prophecy foretold, he led Christianity into the wilderness or out of the Catholic Church to be nourished, shifting the focus towards God's nourishing grace. As we look to our own day, especially since this sign manifested again in 2017, a warning that is there is both the threat of an Antichrist and an omen of a true man of God on earth. We must ask, who are the true men of God today? And who are the Antichrists? By studying the past, we gain the wisdom to discern truth in the present. In the past, the Antichrist was embodied by the religious figure of the Pope, and the true man of God was the one who dared to question his authority. This pattern is no different from when the sign appeared at the time of Jesus' birth, Jesus was killed for questioning the Jewish leadership, and it was the Jewish high priest, Caiaphas, who was instrumental in his death. The true men of God questioned the authorities of the time, exposing their errors and leading people back to truth. This is the real test, to discern whether those in power are truly serving God, or if, like in the days of Luther and Jesus, the true men of God are the ones questioning that very authority.